Hi, this is Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter to do uh, kind of a, a zero and review of the XS sights for the Marlin Guide Gun. Now these are ghost ring sights for the Marlin Guide Gun. Now first let's start off how I operate the Marlin Guide Gun. I run into this a lot. People ask, why do I run thumb over to the side? Not bring the thumb around the back of the hammer, the other side of the, of the pistol grip here. I run on the side, and I do this on any straight stock type rifles. Pistol grip rifles, I do run the thumb around a pistol grip, of course. But on straight stock rifles, I bring the thumb to the side for a couple of reasons. One is to get an exaggerated C-shaped trigger finger so that the trigger, my finger is not, trigger finger is not dragging wood, pulling the muzzle off of the, off target. So I get the exaggerated C-shaped trigger finger where I can pull the trigger straight back. No, not pulling off to the side at an angle or something, pulling straight back. Another reason is for high recoiling rifles, that gets the thumb out of my way so when to recoil, I don't punch myself in the nose with my own thumb. Now another thing for manual action rifles, like the lever guns or bolt action, I like the thumb over to the side because that allows for bang, action, bang. I don't, if you've got your thumb over around the stock, once you fire, bang, now you got to bring your thumb over, work the action, close the action, bring the thumb back over. So by bringing it on the side, not only do I get the exaggerated C-shaped trigger finger, I got faster action. I don't have to move this, I eliminate that movement right there. And that applies for lever guns and bolt action rifles. Now of course this works for us ambidextrous gunfighters here or ambidextrous hunters. It's the same way, either hand, thumb over the side, bang, just like that. Now this uh, 4570 guide gun uses a, a pretty significant cartridge. I'm running the Hornady Lever Evolution today. These are 325 grain. And uh, so, it's, 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 uh, while this can be a sig significantly recoiling rifle, those are the Lever Evolution are kind of eh, kind of mild a little bit. Be nice to have a little bit more oomph to them. But uh, uh, for our testing here, it'll be fine. Uh, one thing, an advantage of these ghost ring sights is that it uh, increases your sight radius by almost 50%. Here's where the original, the dovetail for the original barrel mounted sight, which the rear sight was actually about right in there. So that was like about 14 or 15 inches and we're out to about 21 inches. So we have improved our sight radius. Now the other thing is with these ghost ring sights is when you look, put your eye up behind that rear ghost ring sight, that ring will ghost away kind of fades away and it works especially well if you keep both eyes open because now both eyes are seeing the target and seeing the front sight and you pick up the main part of your front sight with your sighting eye and you just put the front sight on the target so what you're getting is sight alignment this is the sight alignment portion is what this ghost ring is doing is doing the sight alignment portion of what we call an apple seed sight alignment where you get your eye lined up with the front sight and that ghost ring is making sure that your eye is in the right place to line up with the front sight now once you get your sight alignment then it's your sight picture and you may want to use a six o'clock hold, you know, zero it for maybe a six o'clock hold so you hold a little bit under because that is kind of a, a, a semi wide blade on the front side. You can see it uh, right there. Now, well, the way I'm going to zero this, I know a lot of people do a hundred yard zero, and that's fine if you're shooting out to maybe just a little, little tiny bit beyond a hundred yards. I'm going to stick with my normal battle sight zero that I run on most of my semi-automatic rifles. And uh, what that means is what I'm seeking is that for the intermediate range targets, I'm going to be about five inches high. And uh, and then for, for this rifle, because of its uh, this big slug that comes out of this, it's kind of a, it's a trajectory for sure. Um, my battle sight zero for this will be the near zero will be nine yards and the distant zero will be about 180 yards. 
So let's uh, let's move next and look at uh, the data on this cartridge with this rifle and how I'm zeroing it. Okay, so here we are looking at a 100 yard zero. And if you note, if you do a conventional 100 yard zero, what you're really getting is a uh, approximately about a 20-ish yard zero for your near zero and then your distant zero is 100 yards. It's possible that you could get your near zero at 100 yards and your distant zero would be a little bit further out. And so that would certainly um, make for some awkward uh, um, marksmanship. Now as you go past, uh, as you notice you go, it's nice flat shooting out to about 100 yards and then it drops off pretty quickly and out to 200 yards you're already down uh, uh, almost 12 inches uh, that is your hold and, and um, which would be 5.68 minute of angle so I mean you could dial that in if you're using an optic now I like the what I call a well a battle sight zero and for a 4570 uh, I like my battle sight zeros to run in the intermediary ranges be about five inches high. So in this case, say from about 70 yards to about 130, 140 yards, running about four to seven to four to five inches high. And um, so the near zero in this case is going to be nine yards. And uh, what I'll do for zeroing is I will actually shoot at 25 yards, at, at which point I expect the, the impact, point of impact to be 1.5 inches high at 25 yards. And then it works its on out to its apogee at about 100 yards is about 5 inches high. And then it uh, intersects the line of sight again at just a little past 180 yards and then drops off beyond there. Now what's cool is that basically within a 10 inch range here from your apogee to say about right in there at about 220 yards for a lot of situations you can shoot just straight on. You don't have to even factor in the fact that uh, it's you know it's five inches low here five inches high there. Now if you want to be precise of course you could uh, account for the five inches high in the intermediary ranges and five inches low in the distant ranges. Now if you notice uh, say at 300 yards uh, we're 26.6 inches low and that's eight point about eight and a half minute of angle so if you had an optic you could very quickly dial in you know uh, to raise your point of impact eight and a half minute of angle and if you wanted to be real precise on your hundred yard shots you could uh, uh, compensate dial down for almost uh, about five and a half or a little over five and a half minute of angle down whereas on the if we did a hundred yard zero we get out here to 300 yards and you're having to do 13 minute of angle and if your optic has quarter minute per click that would be quite a few clicks over 50 clicks so that would take some time to to dial in so I like the convenience of this battle sight zero which is what I use on all my semi-automatic rifles and uh, I think uh, once you kind of get this mindset that uh, these intermediate ranges of say 80 to 120, 130 yards are going to be five inches high and we do that you know on all my platforms AR, uh, RDB or whatever uh, figure for five inches high for point of impact on these intermediate ranges and then we can compensate out beyond that so um, that's why we'll be zeroing We'll be simulating a zero at nine yards. Actually, we'll do the zero at 25 yards, which will be 1.5 inches high. So we'll shoot at the target, dead center on the target, and expect our point of impact to be 1.5 inches high. So let's get to zeroing.
All right, so I posted an AQT, uh, the, kind of a short form AQT down the range. And AQT, real quick review, offhand, sitting, rapid fire prone, and slow fire prone. Simulating a silhouette target at 100 yards, 200 yards, 300 yards, and 400 yards. Uh, the last time I did the test with the guide gun, I got a 165, which that was with the three power Weaver optic and not a exactly great score uh, but I did I didn't have the optic exactly zeroed so let's see if I can do a little better today with uh, with these excess sights if I can shoot almost as well with the iron sights as I can optic hey that, that'd be pretty sweet so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I've loaded I'm gonna load four rounds into the rifle at a time I'm gonna shoot standing one shot right-handed go to sitting or actually I'm going to shoot squatting one shot right-handed then prone I'll shoot the those uh, other two stages right-handed then I'll load back up with another four rounds and shoot the whole drill left-handed and then um, uh, calculate the score multiply times five and uh, we'll see what we got Okay, so I shot the offhand, it's getting cold, and I forgot to shoot an inch and a half. I remember I got a whole inch and a half low. Uh, it's going to score to four, so I'm just going to go ahead and count it. And then I'm going to shoot uh, squatting and remember inch and a half. Hold under inch and a half. Okay, so here's the results of our AQT. Offhand, uh, I got a four left and right-handed for a total of 40 on that stage. Again, uh, sitting, again, uh, a four and a four, left and right-handed, total of 40 points for that stage. On uh, stage three, uh, right-handed, I shot a three, and then left-handed, I shot a, a five. So again, works out to uh, 40 for that stage. And then the last stage, I got one hit on as a three, which is pretty horrible. Um, so multiplying that times three, it's uh, uh, or times five is 15. Then you multiply it again times two for 30, because it's supposed to be simulating 20 rounds. 150, so we scored a 150. I scored a 165 with the optic. Uh, I definitely find it difficult to kind of find a repeatable thing for this really accurate stuff, trying to shoot the little tiny targets. Uh, I just didn't feel like I was repeating it that well. The optic, I was pretty comfortable. I'm pretty sure with the optic, I could shoot a 215 uh, with it properly zeroed. So, I don't know. Uh, it's great for... You know for a scabbard gun backpack scabbard or saddle scabbard so you don't have so much stuff to hang up on anything i do wish see how high that had to get that front sight to get my battle sight zero i mean that's sticking almost there's probably not too many threads left in there to get it up high enough for that nine yard zero near zero and 180 yard distant zero so what i really need is to shave this down well, it looks like maybe an eighth or three sixteenths of an inch. 
If I'd shaved the front sight down 3 16 of an inch, then that could bring this rear sight down about the same amount. And I think that would be much better. This is really just too tall. Now, if you're, if you're fine with a 100 yard zero, I think it would be about uh, probably an eighth of an inch shorter in there uh, for a 100 yard zero. So that wouldn't be too bad. But I really think the front sight just needs to be, I think, needs to be lower. And then we can get the overall height lower. It's kind of nice that uh, uh, your sight height is only about an inch above the center of the bore, so that's kind of nice. Now something, uh, I know it's uh, these little uh, flathead or these uh, slotted screws that they use. I, I, I'm assuming that they use slotted screws because it, it's traditional. It gives a traditional look with a traditional lever gun rifle. For me, I would prefer Torx or Allen heads in those. And that's largely because when I'm out here without my reading glasses, it's kind of hard to see those slots. And I just really feel like I kind of booger up, you know, using my multi-tool. I mean, if I use a proper gunsmithing tool, I suppose it'd be all right. But I did have to kind of beat them up a little bit with my multi-tool to make field adjustments. Uh, one other thing I think with the, if, you know, with the, a reduced height of the front sight and reduced height of the rear sight, I could probably on my rifle eliminate this neoprene uh, cheek riser. I think though with uh, having to push my my uh, rear the ghost ring side up so high it actually works out for me that the this neoprene cheek riser puts it in about about the right place uh, so that works out all right uh, I do know that I think they make a, a filler for this dovetail cut in the barrel there which just would make it look a little bit better you know it looks a little sketchy just that raw dovetail there I mean it doesn't hurt anything but I mean, it'd be nice to have that just kind of smoothed out a bit, look a little better. But, you know, I'm not real big on looks. To me, it's just a functionality. Um, I don't know. The excess sights are really cool, I think, for for a brush gun. I think for, for me, at least, for ac really precision accuracy, I don't feel... Uh, comfortable as comfortable with them now part of that it is really really cold today and so maybe maybe that is an issue um, maybe on a uh, because that's kind of an unfair comparison because that's kind of an unfair comparison when I'm comparing these excess sites to that uh, three power weaver uh, I was shooting that out in the Badlands and it was a really like, hot day actually but I uh, didn't have all this bulk didn't have to wear gloves and uh, so uh, I think maybe I could narrow the gap a little bit, uh, maybe a little more practice. But uh, yeah, they're, they're nice, well-built sights. Um, I just think that I'll probably go. I'll probably shift that optic back onto this guide gun. It it actually worked really well on there with the had the pick rail on it and had it mounted with really low rings it sat really low so it wasn't a whole lot taller than this than this tall rear ghost ring sight so uh, I may just go back to the the um, you know some glass put some glass back on it okay so let's do the in installation of the excess hunting sights the ghost ring sights for the Marlin guide gun on an 1895 4570 also fits the 450 444 as well this is the want version with the integral ramp and I've already re uh, this remember if we previous videos we had uh, an optic mounted on this with a pick rail and I've already removed the the ramp front sight or was not a dovetail front sight on this particular model so we already removed the front sight and uh, this is the original rear sight dovetail which we've removed the rear sight and i've since learned that there is actually a little filler piece we can get for that so we'll put that in in the future here is the set of sights that as they come from excess and the little packaging includes uh, some loctite and uh, one of the first things i like to do to the rifle before mounting something is likely to be more or less permanent is to give it a, a good wipe down with some Center Solutions Marine Tough Cloth so that uh, the, the metal is protected underneath where the sights are mounted. 
So we'll let that dry while we proceed with the installation of the sights. Now you notice I'm wearing uh, latex gloves and that's so also I not only do I want some uh, rust or rust pro preventative underneath the sights I also do not want the oils on my hands to be left underneath where I'm mounting the sights so I'm going to wear the rubber gloves or latex gloves to prevent that. Okay, there is the front sight, big ramped front sight. Here is the rear sight with the, it comes installed with the, the kind of dust uh, nighttime, I guess, uh, ghost string. You can use the, the smaller ghost string for daytime use. I pres presumably be a little bit more precise. My suspicion is that we can make this larger ghost ring aperture work just fine day and night. Include some mounting screws. Looks like they are all um, there's no uh, torques. It's flat blade so I've got my little Leatherman Crunch bla bladed screwdriver blade out ready to install these. kind of wish they were hex key or or Torx screws, but uh, I guess this is a more traditional look. So it looks like what we have here is we have the rear sight uses the a single relatively large screw and then it has just a a post. And so this is going to that post is going to fit into the right there on there so basically one screw is going to hold it in place with the post just stabilizing it I suppose orienting it correctly the other um, screws are for the front sight I do believe kit includes the looks like some thread locker So we'll start with the rear sight, and I'll put just a little dab of thread locker on there. And that came out kind of fast. Clean up a little bit of the thread locker mess there. Now we'll shift the, the rifle here. All right, so now for the front sight. And the sight has actually uh, comes with three mounting hose, which I presume is for different applications. And so comparing to the pre-drilled holes in my barrel, I'll see that I use the two front holes. So the, the, this rearmost hole is gonna be left blank. And they do include a little filler piece that will fill that. Um, and you kind of uh, work on it from the back side, so you need to put that in first. So we'll do a, do a dab of, of the Loctite they sent. Get a dab on the other screws as well. Get those ready to go. So we'll be done with the Loctite. Now, getting this little guy to thread in is, uh, if you can see, but it's got the screw head on kind of on the back side of the threads. So the flat side of that's gonna face out on the site. The screw itself, the screw slot is actually gonna go inside. So that's why we have to put this on with the side off. It's kind of a pain to get it to thread up especially with a glove. So I get that to sit in there flat. Let me see if we can get it to turn. Maybe if I push some pressure on, put some pressure from the outside and then use the screw to thread it in. 
I use my screwdriver to thread it in. And you just thread it till it bottoms out. So you can see that the there's the slotted screw. So it's well clear of the barrel. I'll just go ahead and do a drop of the red Loctite in there. Okay, so now we're ready to install the sight on the barrel. So I'll go ahead and seat the two screws in the sight itself. That'll help me avoid making too much a mess with all the Loctite. So we line the screws up with the pre-dilled holes on the barrel. back one loosely tie tied in the front one snug them down and that's it there's the front sight Please check out our the Amgun channel. We have it on other alternate platforms besides YouTube. Uh, check out uh, uh, Brideon, uh, also BitChute, as well as Rumble. Um, hope you'll check out our channel on those platforms and subscribe there because who knows how long YouTube is before they start you know, banning firearms content. It's Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextra Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.